My surname is your surname, and your surname is my surname. Your your surname is the Holy Bible, and uh, we we live together as one. All right, so you'll be happy to see me in real life, as I've preached just now. Um, do not call somebody your brother or sister when you are ashamed to live with him under the same house. So we are a family, and today. I would like to make a covenant with you, with all you here whose cameras are on. I would like to see you. We make a covenant together. If you are, if you are driving, you can you can close the camera. Uh, we can meet by faith. Let us do it in a traditional style. Okay, we put our hands together. We we pray like this. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I, I want that all of us stay as one together. Lord, just as you and the Father are one, I want each one of us here who is in this meeting to be one together as I am. You, Lord Jesus, I want everybody here to cling to you. Accept them as your child. Let them cling to you, O Lord Jesus, and never let them go. And may we stay as one family forever and ever. In Jesus God. Christ's name. Amen. 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 So, as for me, I see you as one family, and I hope that you see me as one family as well. So, a, a family member um, is everything is shared, and I'm willing to share my life with you. There is no jealousy as a family. The Holy Spirit is our director. So whatever the Holy Spirit tells us to do, we do. And we will be blessed. We will not be blessed if the Holy Spirit tells me to do something and we do not want to do, such as telling Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Even though it seems not that okay, do it. So God has shown your lives to me, as you have seen in the ministration just now. So God has also revealed to me what my life is to come. And when I see something going in the Holy Spirit's direction and somebody else says no, is is blocking the Holy Spirit, is blocking the blessing. People do not want to sacrifice their son for God, like how Abraham did in God's obedience. It's a simple thing to trust the Holy Spirit speaking through whoever, especially through the man of God. Okay? So when I say something that is by the Holy Spirit, we do it together. Okay? Um, All right. So now you know the prophecy. When you're in your room, you walk around, you hear God's opinion after you feel the fire surrounding you. But if you never feel the fire surrounding you, don't bother to do it. You will get imaginations and destroy your own faith. So when Christ Jesus asked me to do something, I must make sure that I do extremely well because I don't want to disappoint Christ Jesus. So stay happy and do not doubt the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there is no jealousy in God's house. And God will watch over you. Tell your neighbor, craft your words well. Yes, because the one who is wise will speak favorably to the Lord's anointed person. So you can take a reading from First Samuel chapter 25, verse 23 to 34. You can take your time to read this after today's meeting. Abigail spoke wisely to David in that verses, such that David even made her his wife and was filled with the Holy Spirit by her words of encouragement. David was filled with the Holy Spirit because of her words, because Abigail crafted her words well. So if this is how we should speak to the Lord's anointed servant, how do we ought to pray to the Lord? 
So how do we pray to the Lord? Um, is it by laying our requests to the Lord blindly and speak to Him as a friend? Today, some believers, they speak to the Lord as if the Lord is their friend, laying their request blindly. Whereas, if this is how we should speak to the Lord's anointed, how then should we even craft our words all the better when praying to the Lord? So let us turn to John chapter 15, verse 15. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his, far, his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I made known to you. So now the question is, has the Lord even considered us as his friend? But we consider the Lord as our friend. But has he considered us as his friend? We speak to God as if God is near us, like our friend. But many of us do not understand how God works. After spending three and a half years with Jesus, then Jesus called them his friend. And this three and a half years is full-time, not part-time. So they are full-time Christians, not part-time. So how do you know that you are a full-time Christian? You are a full-time Christian when you worship God directly. But you are a part-time Christian when you worship God through your career, through your finances. So this is a part-time Christian. Lord, I worship you. Uh, may you bless my, my uh, career. If my career is doing well, uh, I worship you. Their job is the career. Their heart is placed on the career. They worship God. Everything is through an intermediary. But the full-time Christian is straight away pray to God without any intermediary as their hindrance, as a barrier. A full-time Christian will make his prayer like this. Lord, I come to you directly. Teach me how to do healing. Teach me how to hear your voice. But a part-time Christian is put their career, put their financial uh, request as a factor when praying to God. This is worshipping God through something. Tell a neighbor, when you pray, you cannot put any intermediary as a factor when you pray to God. When Peter and the other apostles follow Jesus, they left being a tax collector, they left being a fisherman, they follow Jesus full-time as his student. There are many martyrs that died in the Lord. They do not care about any factors that hindered them from becoming a full-time Christian and they died as a martyr. So now the question is, are we ignoring the life of Peter? Even the apostles, before they met Jesus, they were under John the Baptist for some time. So it is more than three and a half years. The Lord will count you as a friend only after you know the master's business. As said in John chapter 15, verse 15. Jesus said, everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. So there's nothing that God has kept secret for us. There is no deep secrets of Jesus. Everything he have learned, he made known to us. So let us turn to Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. To you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. This is Satan's so-called deep secrets. You, you, they are trying to deviate you from the foundational doctrine of salvation and add on angelic visitations as, as some uh, secretive Jesus motives. So the idea of salvation is simple. You read the Bible, you have the ability to obey the Holy Spirit. 
then you can go to heaven. That simple in two sentences. But some people, even though they have the ability to follow the Holy Spirit wholeheartedly, they still think they are demon possessed because their, their career is failing. So beware of Satan's so-called deep secrets telling you the uh, very in-depth of things, but they deviate away from the common foundational doctrine of salvation. Next time when you pray, if you do not know all of your master's business, speak to the Lord even better, like how Abigail spoke to David. Every single day, I received tens of prayer requests. But most of them, I do not attend to because of the way they mention their requests. If you read the letters Solomon sent to King Tyre and the letters King Tyre sent back to King Solomon, if you just read the Bible and understand and then and you type your prayer request in that manner, then I will answer you. Even Jesus, when the centurion came to him and said, No, Lord, uh, just speak the word and he will be healed. I, I do not need you to come to my house to pray. And Jesus said, In all of Israel, I have not even found such great faith, but this Gentile displays such great faith. But now when we read this verse, we will say, okay, so centurions display such great faith. Let me message to men of God and say, men of God, just say the word. You do not even need to one-on-one -on -one video call me. I believe I will be healed. Okay. How do I know that your faith is real or not? So let us turn to Luke chapter 7, verse 4 to 5. This is the answer to our discussion now. They came to Jesus and they pleaded with him, this man deserves you to do this. Why? Because he loves our faith and has built our church. So your faith cannot just spring out of nowhere simply because you read the centurion's faith. Okay, faith without works is dead. Why? Because the centurion loves the faith of the only God and he has built churches. That is why Jesus come to his aid. Even the centurion, as you read in the Bible, he himself did not come to Jesus, but he sent elders of Israel to Jesus first. Okay, so faith without works is dead. Blessings from God is not something you can just claim it by faith. Okay, blessings from God is not something you can just claim it anyhow by faith. So when a preacher prays, I see breakthrough in your life. No matter how much you shout, I receive, it will still not come to pass unless you understand how God works and who God is. It will not come to pass unless the, the blessings of God will not come to pass in your life unless you understand how God works. No matter how much you pray, no matter how well you shout, I receive it will still not come to pass because God will not reward those with a blind faith.